Hello and welcome to Cyber Career Differentiators, Focus and Problem Solving. This video is a short tape based on the live session held in May, 2021. A little bit about me. My name is Julie Chapman. I am an information security leader and military veteran with over 20 years of experience in federal government and private sector organizations. My expertise includes risk management, cybersecurity, strategy, and policy. I've held leadership roles in multiple industries and organizations, including the FBI. I am a certified information security manager with Azure and AWS cloud certifications. I've studied strategic decision and risk management at Stanford. I hold a BA and an MBA from Strayer. But most importantly, I am absolutely passionate about mentoring emerging cyber talent. And so I thank you for watching this video. These are all the topics I cover in this series. At the time of this recording, there is a short take available for communication. I encourage you to go to the YouTube channel and watch this short take because communication is a core soft skill for cyber career success. Understanding the business and connecting with leadership are two critical topics because they really hone in on aligning your activities as a cyber pro with the goals and objectives of your business. To cert or not to cert, that is the question. And that will be the topic of the live June 2021 session. It will be a spirited discussion because there are strong opinions about the utility of cybersecurity certs as opposed to cybersecurity experience. But this short take is about focus and problem solving. So let's dive in. During the live session, I began with your workplace mindset because this is the very thing that will affect your cyber career throughout your whole journey. Your workplace mindset will affect what you choose to focus on and that will directly influence your approach to problem solving. Your workplace mindset is made up of your brand, your career and your awareness. Your brand is basically what people say about you when you're not in the room. The way you communicate, are you timely? Do you follow up when you say you will? Do you follow through on your obligations? Are you consistent even when it's not convenient and especially when it's not easy? Your brand is developed over the course of time through each individual interaction you have with everyone around you at work. Thinking about your career, do you have your short-term and long-term goals articulated? Maybe you've written them down somewhere. Do you have at least one mentor either in your workplace or outside of it? Do you have at least one sponsor at work? Do you have training and experiences wish lists? These are the things that will solidify your position now and propel you to the next opportunity. Pivoting to awareness. This includes things like the org chart, and I don't mean the way it's drawn, right? I mean the way the different business units in your organization interact with each other, the communication flows, the workflows, the power flows. Are you aware of industry trends, things that happen outside of your organization, which impact what happens within? For example, if I'm an FBI cybersecurity professional, my industries are federal law enforcement, and national security. And I need to understand what goes on in those arenas to maximize the value that I bring to the organization as a cyber pro. Same thing with key leaderships con leadership concerns and top of mind topics and issues for the business areas. A solid understanding of those things will increase my value add. Organizational history will help me with my solutioning prowess. If I understand my organization's journey, I'm a better solutioner. During the live session, we really dived into ways, tips, and tricks to check the boxes on all of the things you see here on the screen. Um, but just remember about your brand, your career, and your awareness. They make up your workplace mindset, and that will affect your journey, your entire career journey. So pausing here for a moment and thinking about this makes sense. This is an FBI org chart. I'm not revealing any state secrets here because this is publicly available at doj.gov. 
I'm sharing this because I'm going to illustrate the ways that understanding your business affects your career. This org chart is from 2010, as you can see down here. And at the time, Mr. Eric Holder was the attorney general. The FBI is led by a director who has a chief of staff and a deputy. Each of the FBI's 56 field offices is led by a special agent in charge. Here are some key functions that report directly to this executive, things like public affairs, um, general counsel, EEO, the ombudsman, and integrity and compliance. Reporting to this executive, it doesn't really make sense for those functions to, to sort of be embedded here in the working areas, right? And here is another executive, the associate deputy director, resource planning and inspection report directly to that executive, seems to make sense, solid logic there. Moving down here, here are some more functions that report directly to that executive, facilities and logistics, finance, resource management, and security. Again, makes sense because none of these functions need to be embedded down here. Looking at these two branches, which report to the associate deputy director, we have ITB and all of the divisions, and then we have human resource branch and the divisions for that. Going up to the deputy, we've got three branches here. We've got national security branch with counter intel, counterterrorism, DI and WMD. And then we've got criminal cyber response and services branch with these divisions, including cyber. And finally, we have science and technology branch with these divisions, including lab and sieges. Now, there's a lot of um, FBI lab lore in popular media, film, TV, you know, uh, lots of movies about that. Um, but this is how the FBI worked in 2010. And pausing here to underscore where security division sits once again, reporting directly to an executive, just because of the function. Now remember this because we are going to fast forward in time to 2014. And here we will, will see that there has been a reorg and security division ended up under human resources branch. Now I'm going to pause here because my comments are going to take two paths. The first path relates to career, and the second relates to performance as a cyber pro in terms of problem solving. I'm gonna ask you to pretend that you are a cybersecurity professional in the FBI. You work in security division, and it was reorg to human resources branch. Now let's think about career for a moment. Could this reorg affect your talent experience? Yes, it absolutely could. For example, the training budget, it could grow, it could shrink. The types of projects and opportunities that are available, those could change. What about the politics? Maybe there are some, some vibes that are no longer aligning with, with yours, right? You are the professional and you start to notice these things and you're not having a great time, but you are the type of professional that kind of puts your head down and pounds the keyboard, right? You don't really go outside. So you're not aware that there are opportunities at the branch level in the information and technology branch or in any of these divisions underneath. You are also unaware that you could take on a crime fighting role in cyber division because you keep your head down and you don't really float outside. You know, you don't network, you don't understand. So that could affect your career, your awareness. Now let's flip over to performance. If you are presented with an opportunity to solve a problem and you don't know what goes on outside of your division or your branch, there's a high likelihood that your solutioning will be very myopic and you could um, recommend or implement solutions that actually cause problems for other people in the organization. That is not a good place to be. So. This, this was a demonstration about how an understanding of the org chart and how the business works helps you in your career, but also in your performance. Bringing it all back to the beginning, workplace mindset. That exercise and that demo is basically to show you how important it is to understand the org chart and beef up your awareness of your organization. 
um, delved really deeply into this during the live session, but please remember how important this is. Now let's stop here to think about our workplace mindset overall. If our workplace mindset is positively oriented, in other words, our brand is solid, we've got our career goals articulated. We don't have the position we ultimately want at the moment, but we have a path to get there. We've got mentors, we've got a sponsor. We are aware of our organization, how it works and what goes on outside of it, which will affect what happens inside of it. And we know the history, we know the journey. So our workplace mindset is positively oriented. This means that we are likely operating on the left side of this chart. We are focusing on performance and solutioning and adding value. We are very positive. We are not afraid to ask questions. We are able to work with different people in the organization because our mindset is positive and it frees us to actually perform. Conversely, if our mindset is negative, we're gonna be on the right side of this chart because that's human nature. We're gonna be the ones that always try to look smart we are, we're gonna be the ones that use tech talk, especially when it's not necessary and inappropriate. If we're lucky enough to be invited to brainstorming sessions, we are gonna defend our ideas like they are our internal organs to the death. We're gonna withhold information. We're gonna hoard it because information is quote unquote power. We're very negative because we don't feel secure and we don't have a lot of hope for where our career is going. So please think about that and think about getting your workplace mindset where it needs to be. This is interesting. Um, this was a video that we discussed in the live session. I'll go ahead and play it and then share some thoughts. Hey, Black Corp Tech Time, story time. We'll call this one, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. You know how this starts. I'm involved in process improvement for an organization. And typically this means that either the applications being used by the organization need to be upgraded. IT within the organization more than likely has to get involved. However, because it's already been underperforming, I end up bumping heads with whoever's in IT because eh, I'm kind of making them look lazy. And so at this one company, this particular head of IT was determined that he was not going to do shit for me. I had a process connected with a vendor for that organization and I needed his help on it. He refused. Okay. I proceeded to build and leverage a relationship with leadership within the vendor company that allowed them to create and pay for the improvement project that I needed. I got them to pay to save us money. That leader of IT was insistent that there was no way that I could do it. Not only did I do it, but once it was accomplished, I locked him out of any of the methodology on how it got done. Just because I asked for your help doesn't mean I need it. So... Most, most of the folks in the live session chose to focus on the delivery and the behavior of this business leader. But remember, this session is about us, the cyber community. And this is a commentary on someone's brand, specifically the IT leader. He now has a reputation of being a blocker, right? You don't want that reputation. The productive approach, right? is to be a collaborator, be a communicator, talk to the stakeholder, figure out what it is they're trying to do. And if you have legitimate um, you know, reasons why certain things won't work, articulate that, but quickly move to figuring out how to, how to make it work. Alternatives, solutions, okay? You wanna be that go-to person, you wanna be a problem solver, you wanna be a value add, remember, Cybersecurity doesn't create, um, create value for the organization other than internally. We don't generate profit or revenue, right? We don't create the widgets. So we're a business enabler. Always remember that and move accordingly. So this is an exercise we did live where we wanted to practice using strategy versus tactics. Kept it simple. Strategy is deciding what needs to be done and tactics are the specifics and the how. And uh, we presented a scenario, right? And people really struggled with this. Um, the cybersecurity community is very tactical, right? And so everyone who volunteered to speak up 
immediately went to tactics. But the scenario is like this, you're a team lead, you're up for promotion, leadership wants to let you handle this particular challenge. And the challenge is that um, everyone in the company is using removable media, media routinely in their work. And you're the one that's gonna come up with a potential solution to reduce the organizational risk associated with that. So again, I had to really prompt the audience because everyone immediately went to tactics. But here are some of the strategies that were, were developed after the prompts. And here's a good one. Reduce or eliminate the use of removable media in the organization. So think about it. Remember, we're trying to develop solutions to drive down the risk associated with using removable media. So logically, reducing or eliminating the use, that's a, a good strategy. Another one was increase user awareness, okay? We're not talking about how we're just saying we're going to do this. That's strategy. Another one, increase accountability, okay? No hows, just what we're going to do. And that really had to be prompted because people really went tactical immediately. So of course, there were some really great tactical suggestions about how to reduce and eliminate the use of removable media, right? Tech talk started. But I'm just gonna summarize it by saying cross-domain solutions and tools and technology. Next, tactics for increasing user awareness. Here we've got things like training, SOPs and guides. So someone suggested that we beef up the annual InfoSec training accordingly, right? Or maybe when people are saying, I'm about to use removable media, they have to have training specifically around that. But training is a way to increase user awareness. It is a tactic to meet that strategy. Next is increasing, increasing accountability. And uh, so with this, um, one suggestion was no bring your own, right? Company issued only, and then tracking, right? So pause and look at this. Strategy is deciding what you need to do and tactics are the how. This is important because these cyber criminals are highly strategic. They start with strategy and then they select the tactics which will lead to success. If we as cybersecurity professionals stay tactical, we will lose. So this was a very important part of the presentation. All right. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions or comments, please share them with me via email, cybercareerdifferentiators at gmail.com. Please hit like and subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in a future live session.